Und so, in this one. Paul Heyman was the mad scientist behind ECW. The evil genius. Oh my gosh. He looks the exact same. Paul Heyman was the mad scientist behind ECW, the evil genius of SmackDown's golden era, and someone who has evolved and remained a force in wrestling. He for looks decades. the exact He's same. Been a manager to many of the greats as well as the advocate and special counsel to two of the very best. For this video, we want to He's goaded, his bro. career and highlight what made Paul Heyman one of wrestling's greatest minds. Let's first look at Heyman's early career, including his original Stone run as a heel manager cold. as Holy shit. Dangerously. As a young, pushy photographer, Paul learned from legendary managers like Captain Lou Albano, classy Freddie Blassie, and the Grand Wizard. Stone Cold so no with hair is like how well cursed. Paul he adapted. Even in his early days, he seemed like a natural. He's gonna rip your stinking head off and spit right down your look at all these goats bro in their youth so weird to look at Right from the start, Heyman was hustling and lying. By blagging his way backstage and sneaking into production meetings, where he learned from legends like Dusty Rhodes. Paulie Dangerously was an arrogant Wall Street yuppie with a brick-sized cell phone. I control everything I need to control hey! when my big money people call Paulie Dangerously. That was not only used for constant business dealings, but also came in handy as a weapon. He was obnoxious, overbearing, and difficult. Oh. My. God. What is that on your head? What is that on your head? Holy shit, he's got the Kevin McAllister, bro. Difficult to work with. Look at this shit, man. Basically, his on-screen persona was almost identical to his real-life self, something that remained the same for Heyman's entire career. He was seen by many of his peers as a cockroach of the wrestling business, someone people wanted to dislike but just had to put up with. But as we'll see, Paul was really a social butterfly with endearing qualities. Heyman was the mastermind behind Extreme Championship Wrestling. He redefined the industry by making a product for the fans. It was some of the most violent, technically proficient, and amazing high-flying action we'd ever seen. So all wrapped fire. up into one epic show, which had the most loyal, crazy, and passionate fans that would chant the company's initials in support. Damn. Wrestling was stuck in the 1980s, and I thought it all needs to change. Paul accentuated the strengths and hit. What's the up, numbers? Two, two, five. Like, what? Like, how do you expect to be addressed? Weaknesses of what was available to him. This was especially true when it came to his roster. Heyman had an eye for talent where he could spot a superstar before anyone else. Steve Austin was pleased. Hey, Daddy Dontai, my little stink bug. Are you gonna listen to Doja Deluxe album tonight? No. With Tizo. Love no. you, sweet papa. Specifically because you? No of this. Paul requested to work with him in WCW. However, management didn't see what Paul saw, but now in ECW, Heyman was able to give Steve the platform he deserved and could take full advantage of. I've been crapped on for four years. I believe I deserve a break. I didn't get to climb a ladder to the top in WCW like this. Heyman empowered all his wrestlers, allowing them to shed their blood, sweat and tears on a literal canvas. Heyman encouraged and motivated the wrestlers to where they'd run through walls for him and the ECW fans. Even if he lied and didn't pay everyone on time, or at all. Because you have all made it to the dance. Because believe me, this is the dance. And I have never believed in a locker room like I believe in the locker room of ECW. We have the hardest working performers. Come on, come on. Yo, hat. Hmm. Come on. Yo, hat. Yo, hat. Yo, hat. Yo, come on. Move that f um, yo, hat, come on. Yo, hat, come on. Towards the end of their existence, ECW struggled to balance finances. After how, how do you know it? Exclamation mark, uh, don't know. And the link should, uh, should pop up. My guy. Being screwed over by pay-per-view providers and TV station TNN. God knows the network has never put out one freaking commercial or one press release to let you know that we're here. We hate this stinking network. Hey, network, I dare you to throw me off the air. ECW <laughs> came to an end, but the fans and rest. I dare you to throw me off the air. To them. I'm not crying. My eyes are red because I was in the back smoking a joint with Van Dam. They will always have a special place in their heart for Heyman for making it all possible. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! He gave so much. People shit on him. I shit on him. My family lost money. His parents lost money. People who say, oh, he bounced a check on me, he's a scumbag, he's a liar, at times he was. And, and when you say this is a panel of, of a Mount Rushmore, yes. 
But you know what? If there's one Mount Rush, it should be Paul and a bunch of us standing behind him. After ECW closes, store glazing, glazing, I'm glazing. I'm a chatter, glazing. Bro, it's called showing respect, showing love where love deserves to be showed, man. Was Heyman enjoyed a memorable sin on commentary in WWF with Jim Ross? Maybe you could, like, put your arm Shout out Jim Ross. Oh my gosh, she's fucking Diesel. Together or something? Are you flirting with me? Yeah. Don't you realize that the mop had more personality than you? That the mop had more charisma than you? That the mop had more chemistry with Perry than you? I mean, can you honestly believe that you ever had a chance against a mop? Get lost! Take a hike! I came to Washington, D.C., and I'm gonna get to see Bush! Austin's gonna get his ass bit! It's by who? He my Kurt Angle! My Kurt Angle! My Kurt Angle! Get out of your mind! Get away with it! I got away with it! <laughs> He had a great chemistry with JR and cut some fantastic promos on TV. You drove everybody out of business, didn't you, Vince? You ran all the competition to the ground and you stole all their ideas and you made yourself a billionaire out of it. I have been sitting like a damn corporate sellout next to that damn pig! Heyman got the audience to decide him enough to where he could eventually return in a significant heel role down the line. After ECW, Heyman's greatest work as a booker came during his stint as the head writer Holy for SmackDown shit. in 2002 and 2003. This is considered hey! the show's greatest period, as Paul expertly utilized the strong talent he had Holy available to shit. him. The Look brand split had just occurred, so Ghost! it was important for SmackDown to stand out and be different from Raw. And given how unique and innovative Heyman's ECW was, man, there was no better man to nostalgic. lead the brand. Yes, things were still overseen it by Vince McMahon. Man, but Paul show. had a lot of free reign. While Raw featured numerous long talking segments, SmackDown prided itself on being the wrestling show. Yes, there were still some suspect angles, but these were handled by Vince and Stephanie. Plus, much of the show's runtime was taken up by in ring action. Heyman built his show around a core of wrestlers known as the SmackDown Six. This was a tag team program that allowed six singles wrestlers to feature in main events, producing in ring clinics on a weekly basis. Mysterio's back out here, and he's looking to make a big impact on the top of the cage. Insane. I will st still never get over that these niggas had to wrestle just in an empty stadium for a bit. That's just awkward. Edge on the top rope. Edge. Look at these guys are sucking it up. Get for this back. Whoa. The show was constantly better than Raw, which the TV ratings eventually began to reflect, as did the house show and merch numbers when it came to the SmackDown talent. Countless wrestlers benefited greatly from Heyman's creative, including Edge, who Paul saw as SmackDown's version of Sting. Then there was Rey Mysterio, the antithesis of the wrestler WWE usually went for. Left to their own devices, the company would have likely missed the boat with Rey, but Heyman was able to show the higher-ups how amazing Mysterio was. This was aided by how much the commentators put Rey over. This was directly instructed by Paul as after Michael Cole and Taz had called the show live, Heyman would bring them into the studio the next day to redub certain lines. Paul was able to do this because the show was taped, so Heyman could add stuff in during post-production that would have otherwise got flagged by Vince while he was in the announcer's ears during the show. That a this meant the announce team, controller? Paul could effectively tell the stories he wanted without others intervening. Cole and Taz's commentary is remembered fondly during this period, and both greatly credit Heyman for making them better announcers. The competition is better on SmackDown. We also got the best Announced him Unfortunately though, behind the scenes, Paul had to fight a lot of battles. Battles he began to lose more and more. Heyman fought the top brass on everything, which annoyed the likes of Stephanie McMahon a great deal. If you can't trust someone, you can't be in business with them. Paul was ultimately removed from his position, and while SmackDown remained a decent show, it never recaptured the magic Heyman had. There's something special about letting the artist be the artist while a brilliant teacher like Paul guides them in the right direction. It's what made ECW hey, special. Doncha, and it's thank you for being you. You created a great community to vibe with. It was dope to see you at the Belize Ball and you knowing exactly what to do with my phone the instant I pointed at you. <laughs> Wishing you, Danielle, and Demir the best, Purple Heart 6. Yo, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the donation, bro. I appreciate you, man. Fans look back at Heyman's time in charge of SmackDown so fondly. Chris! Also, it was good seeing you, too. Take another bite, fatso! 
Eat it up. Paul returned in 2002 as the agent for the company's hottest up-and-coming prospect, Brock Lesnar. Here, Heyman was able to transfer the heat he'd built up during the God invasion damn, he's fucking built. to his new client, while at the same time acting as the mouthpiece and behind Can the new react to 21 Pilots music video song is called Next Semester came out a week ago. Also been watching for a couple of years, only watched live a couple times. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for, like, you know, subscribing on YouTube and, and, and shit like that. Why are y'all saying fuck no, hell no? <laughs> oh, my God. And, to Lesnar. and ladies and gentlemen, the next big thing is Brock Lesnar. Just like with ECW, for Brock, it was all about showcasing his strengths and hiding his weaknesses. With Paul's help, Lesnar enjoyed one of the greatest rookie years of any wrestler ever. Brock had gotten over strong enough to where he was able to turn babyface and now feud with Heyman's new clients. All this was happening while Paul was also a head writer of SmackDown. Paul oh, wow. Oh, my God. Towards the end of his WWE run, Lesnar realigned with Heyman for a short time. You're the greatest WWE champion of all time! This is your hometown! The laser the of the century. Run together was still to come. After Brock made his return in 2012, the higher-ups tried to make oh. him cut promos. I'm not the same little naive farm boy. The world got to witness firsthand Brock Lesnar. Yo, Dante, how you be However, my bucketeer? You still yeah. link up with Jinx? And what about Tyrone Magnus? Is he still in your crosshairs? Will you bring back world star hip hop questionnaire back? Been waiting for long time now. Catch you later, Dante. Peace. And and then you just and then you just leave. You come. You talk about literally the start. Of me doing YouTube. <laughs> Bucketeers, Jinx, Tyrone, Magnus. <laughs> no, I still watch I still watch uh Tyrone's videos. It's so crazy because like bro. I love Tyrone is Just literally got paid and wanted to thank you, Ty, for being the reason I downloaded Twitch back in twenty nineteen. Hope your mental has been well. Thank you. Heart. Thank you so much. That actually means a lot. My mental has been amazing. Wonderful wife wonderful son is just like and also like streaming the like y'all bro y'all just been actually so fucking just cool bro like i like i don't feel like pressured or like that i have to do the most whenever i stream anymore bro i feel like i could just just do whatever and we could just vibe bro like oh my gosh I, it, it always felt like a like a hassle like oh my gosh i gotta do this i gotta do that but it's like now we could just we just vibe and just do whatever i kind of like that but yeah anyway yeah um I appreciate you. Thank you so much for uh, for the donation. I was gonna say something else, but I literally forgot. Oh yeah, yeah. Tyrone, <laughs> Tyrone's like become uh, like one of those woke, like the guy, the guy against wokeness and in, in movies and shit like that. Oh, they casted another female role, guys. <laughs> it's so funny. I still watch him though. Like I, I still watch him because it's like it's funny. But <laughs> I just be like, I just be like, oh shit, oh damn. Uh, shout out to Tyro though. Tyro funny as hell, bro. He he's funny as hell. Like I remember when y'all told me about how that one girl is playing the um fantastic or the Silver Surfer, and then I seen literally that he made a video about it. <laughs> Tyrone over there cooning it up on YouTube. Yo, how might he have fallen? Chill. He's literally be he, they they. They have put him in, into those like group of YouTubers who are just, I guess people, I, I guess people don't fuck with, and it's like, damn, really? I, I mean, like I see the videos, but like, oh damn, is that bad? <laughs> Lesnar simply told him to hire Paul instead. Paul, say something stupid. Heyman returned, and every time he spoke, he told us who he is and what his role was. It was a simple but key ingredient of such a great character. It's an introduction for new fans and something regular viewers can repeat. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is... Like the Hodge Twins? Yeah, I don't know, like... I don't know what happened to the Hodge Twins either, um, because I seen, I seen their, their stuff. I was like, oh, shit. It's, so, it's just so crazy to see how people... 
you know how people uh i'm not gonna say change but mold how people mold all, uh, how people end up molding you know yeah evolve like who they I, like i don't know if that's always been how he was or how the hodge twins were if it's been there the whole time but they just never showed it or if like they weren't like that and then they was introduced to, to stuff i feel like a lot of people when andrew tate or whatever people like that started going viral and shit like that more dudes started seeing them like you know what wait that's right that's actually right and actually i really feel like this and i'm gonna start voicing it more bro i'm gonna actually start saying this shit man why are all these women taking all these men roles why is this happening keep this wokeness out of the film it's woke bro he reviewed a movie tyrone reviewed a movie that that I, I liked, and I went to watch his review on it. And he was like, yes, it's filled with wokeness. I was like, oh God, come on, Tyrone. <laughs> I just wanted to hear, I just wanted to hear it. It was the, it was the, the, the Roadhouse, it was the Roadhouse movie chat. I was like, oh, he watched it. Oh, let me see what he thinks. Yep, it's full of wokeness, guys. <laughs> I was like, Tyrone, what? <laughs> What's happening, man? <laughs> hey, my name. It's a woke fest. Is Paul Heyman? <laughs> How stupid are you that I make fun of you and then what do you do? You say my name along with me. My name is Paul Heyman. My name is Paul Heyman. That's fire. My name is Paul, Paul Heyman. Heyman. That's and hard. I am the advocate for the reigning. As the advocate for Brock, Heyman cut the That's best. That's amazing. He's got grown men scream. Did you see this this guy? He's got a vein popping out of his neck screaming this shit. That's As the amazing. the advocate for Brock, Heyman cut the best promos of his career. Lesnar was the prize fighter while Paul acted as the Don King style hype man promoter. He who dies with the most street cred still dies. I got two words. For you. That's kind of hard, though. He who dies with the most street cred still dies. Mm. I feel like that needs to be told to a lot of niggas, bro. Because they do a lot of shit for, for fucking street cred and, and all this shit, man. Especially streamers, bro. Like, oh, my God. Nobody care that you're doing all this shit. And why are there so many? Like, how is, like, making jokes towards kids and talking about what you want to do to kids? How is that funny? When the, when the fuck has that ever been, ever been funny, bro? Like, I feel like Kick as a platform started as a place where, yo, you can say things freely and not have to worry about getting banned. And, and, and it's turned to, yo, you can literally say whatever you want. And you can be whoever you want. And no one can stop you. Even if you're a sick fuck. Hey, don't I please watch this clip. It's one of the best entrances of all time. I feel like people confuse freedom of speech to actually being a fucking weirdo. You say weirdo, weird ass shit. And then if someone calls you out on it, dude, it's freedom of speech. This ain't Twitch. Go back to Twitch with that. If you're sensitive. Dog, no, that's just actually disgusting. What? Like you're just, you're weird. It's, at, you're just weird. Whatever. What do I know, man? However, he spoke with such eloquence and conviction, you almost believe every word he said, which says a lot about how good Heyman was given how much he lied throughout his career. Yo, he's literally like that one character in the, in the Disney movies <laughs> who just always, when they're under pressure, they fold and just turn their back on whoever just to get out the situation. Easier in life to lie. I never liked him anyway. Come on. Lies so much easier. I have such an aversion to the truth because the truth is a lot harder pill to swallow. But then again, he lied with so much charisma. Yeah, I remember when Scar from Lion King folded so hard, he just started blaming everybody. Like the nigga blamed the hyenas, dog. 
and persuasion that even if he screwed people over, they still loved him. This nigga blamed the hyenas, man. As much as he lied, he also spoke many home truths and absolutes. No matter what, Heyman never missed on the mic. It was the hyenas. They, they made me do this. This was their idea. For the most non-PG-ass kicker of the PG era. Well, last night, The Undertaker was a loser. My client, Brock Lesnar, conquered the street. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mike! Mike! Lion Brock Lesnar conquered the Undertaker's <laughs> undefeated streak at WrestleMania! And I'm the one behind the one in 21 and 1! Eat, sleep, suplex, Repeat. Did Triple H dispute me? No. Cena? Oh, yeah, I know I left out Andre because he's dead, stupid. You don't need to sell your soul <laughs> to the devil. The devil sold his soul to me a long time ago. You can sell your soul to the devil, but your ass belongs to Barack. Holy. <laughs> Holy shit. have seen Yo, is it possible to get an Oscar from WWE? Cause this guy, this guy's going crazy. <laughs> hey kids, there is no Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny is a holy fable. shit. <laughs> that yellow stream running down your leg was not pineapple juice. Paul's second run with Brock can be epitomized with the catchphrase, that's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. Heyman regularly said this in the run-up to Lesnar's matches. It turned out to be more than just an iconic line since the majority of times it was said, Brock in fact came away with the win. Now that's not a prediction, that's a spoiler. Brock Lesnar is going to get rid of Kofi Kingston. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a prediction, it's a spoiler. And I told you... It wasn't a prediction. It's a spoiler. That's kind of hard. Which means it was the truth. I haven't violated a spoiler since before WrestleMania 30. As the advocate for Lesnar, we got to see Paul interact with a lot of other characters, which made for great TV. But I do have something for Stephanie. You know what? I... <laughs> ow, 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 ow. You want to see your husband fight Brock Lesnar? You got it! It's done! Don't I, if TC is a WWE wrestler. To pay my <laughs> me if, me if TC was, yo, I ain't gonna lie. TC was a wrestler, I'd be the greatest. I'd be the greatest guy on the mic. He would not have to say a word. Client Brock. I got Destroyer, hold on. <laughs> Let me hold this, bro. Let me get this, bro. <laughs> One. That your son will call Brock Lester daddy. Can we just snort? You'll never see Brock Lesnar in a title <laughs> match again! Don't I PLS He's start locked uploading in. your VODs again? PLS him grown now niggas gotta work. I be missing hella shit. PLS don't I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, man. Uh, I know. Never! RKO! You're right, you're right, you're right. Oh, oh shit! Nowhere! Oh my God! CM Punk was one of the Yo, don't I? It's been a while, big bro. What's that? Just caught up with your second channel vids too. Been in and out consciousness after a long tour abroad. Missed the don't I's daily drops. And holy shit, Cully, can't find him. How's he been? Also, Samaj, see you around. What? Wait. Rash Rashid. Wait, do I know you? Like, what? 
Wow Ego. Bitch, I'm asking. Oh my God. I don't know. I'm asking a question because the shit that he's saying, he either he either an OG like an like an OG supporter or I like knew him or like or talked to him or something. Bro, he's asking about like people like that. I'm talking about like that's the that's from the start, bro. What do you mean you've been in and out of consciousness after a long tour abroad? Like what? Oh my gosh, y'all. To benefit I'm trying to remember, bro. Those from Nigga was in a coma. How was he in a wait, what the oh shit. That's who I'm thinking about. Like, are we talking about cause his name that no, that was Rashad the reactor. Rashid is not that's that's who I that's the first person that was coming to my mind, but it's it says Rashid, not Rashad. So I'm not I think this is just like somebody who watched from the Rashid Thurmond. Hold on. Nigga, who is this? I don't know who this is. Nigga, is this DMX? <laughs> uh, yo, shout out to shout out to Rashid, Rashid, bro. Like you, holy shit! Like you've been around for a minute, bro. You talking about daily drops and. Cooley, yeah, Cooley don't do, I, I don't think he does, like, I think he posts, like, every once in a blue moon, but, um, yeah, he don't really post like that. Heyman's guidance. Without having Paul in his corner at OVW, Punk wouldn't have made it to the main shows, never mind the company as a whole. It speaks to how much Heyman thought of Punk that during the daily drops when the fuck was this? This was, like, early, bro. That's when I used to do vlogs. A December to dismember debacle in 2006, Paul put his job on the line to champion what he believed in, which included pushing Punk to have a featured role on the pay-per-view. Paul Heyman saw something in me. That's right, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Paul Heyman refused to fire CM Punk. So given the connection, it made sense to pair Heyman and Punk together after Paul returned in 2012. Interestingly, Heyman managed Punk and Brock together, but each of their presentations were drastically different. Paul played more of a background role for Punk. However, Heyman's presence was still felt. From his facial expressions... See him, Paul. See him, Punk. Every night he goes. And we got the walrus. Paul Heyman out here to keep reminding him of it. Because, like, even when he's in the background, you still notice him, bro. You just still see him doing something, bro. Constantly. To the way he held the WWE title. I love this intro. I am the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whenever I hear that song, the absolute pro we knew him to be. I While think it's Punk, San Andreas. We also got to see Heyman interfere in matches and get physical. Officials are still down. Paul ended up turning on Punk in a feud that started off very well. Overall, it will be remembered for how entertaining Heyman was throughout it all. Even when things took a turn creatively, Paul remained the highlight. No! Oh, so, shit. Hey, Stay out of my personal life! CM Punk, oh, damn. I still love you. And for the first time in your life, Paul Heyman, you tell the truth. Show me a hero and I'll show you a coward that ran out of options. And now you're gonna feel my wrath! Do you understand me? Do you? I fathered you! I care about you! We're even ahead of let go! The punk's hanging on! Let go! Let go! Damn, this is some movie shit! Wait, hold on, this shit good! No! Oh, shit! Because I am the voice of the voice of the voiceless. This is my pipe bomb 
about CM Punk. In 2005, WWE had no vision for you. And what did I do? I martyred my entire career for you. Oh, By 2020, sick. Heyman had built Yo, himself a first ballot Hall of Fame career, but little did we know he was about to embark on one of his greatest runs to date. As the special counsel to Roman Reigns, Heyman played the loyal wise man. He played a key role in getting the previously polarizing Reigns over as a tribal heel. It's not just a prediction, that's a spoiler. This, this, this alliance with Reigns and Heyman. Just when you thought I was out, he pulled me back in. Pointing your accusatory fingers at me for corrupting him. It's him corrupting me. Hall was also a pivotal piece in crafting the critically acclaimed Bloodline story. Heyman and the group sought to put together a body of work that would be compared to The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, and The Wire. A compelling, thrilling drama with- Really? Huh? Nigga, what? Kinda slow your own. piece in crafting the critically acclaimed bloodline story. Heyman and the group sought to put together a body of work that would be compared to The Sopranos, Breaking Bad and The Wire. A compelling thrilling drama with cinematic storytelling and riveting villains. Roman Cap. We're, we're one day, one day, no. We might have to do it tomorrow. Cause I kinda wanna do it before WrestleMania. It would make no sense for me to watch it after. We gotta watch the video. We gotta watch a video on on the bloodline. In Reigns. Roman Reigns. And with Heyman at the helm, there was no better man to act as the group's slimy businessman on screen. Yo, don't I? I was in and out of consciousness because of some chemical I was exposed to in Afghan. Oh, also, shit. congrats on you and Danielle's wedding and also the baby Demir. Damn bro, we really got old. Believe it or not, I ripped a few DVDs with your vids for tour. Oh, yo, oh my gosh. When you said tour, I thought you meant like, I thought you was a goddamn musician or a, a comedian or something. I thought you were, you meant you went on tour. But, oh, you was, you was, you was, you was out there on the field, man. <laughs> you was out there on the field, my boy, um... Yo, that's actually, that's actually love, bro. That's actually love, man. I appreciate you, man. The Bloodline story is two hours long. Um, I mean, well, whatever video I find, like, I mean, I kind of want to, I kind of want to see if this, if what he just said was cap. Cause I mean, I like, I like Breaking Bad, you know, I like Sopranos. I like, you know, those types of movies, there are types of shows. Ding! Plus, he had history with Yano Wise and was a respected real life friend of the family. Paul Heyman. And hey, you go way back with my family. That's why I got love for you, Us. Paul's story arc was enhanced greatly during this period from washing his hands. Holy of rock, shit, that's terrifying. Big ass nigga just running at you full speed. Hell no. Nah. Wide television every Friday night. If Brock Lesnar. You. I, I'm under the impression he wouldn't dare show up at Extreme Rules. Uh, no, not that Brock Lesnar is Roman Reigns. I mean, you beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. This is when Brock Lesnar usually takes six to nine months off and leaves everybody else hanging, which is a life that you rescued me from, my tribal chief, which is why I love you, my tribal chief. Are you, no! Are you kidding me? And Roman Reigns in the Superman punch. It was all Roman's idea to begin with. It was never my idea. Oh my God. Yo! The loyalty he showed to his Roman. My tribal chief. I am the wise man. Who's the main event around here? Roman Reigns. <laughs> wise man. It's my tribal chief. <laughs> Who is the tribal chief? You are my tribal chief. Do I gotta open my own doors now? No, no, no. My, uh, my, my apologies, my tribal chief. <laughs> wise man. 
Yes, my tribal chief. Is it not WrestleMania season? It is WrestleMania season, my tribal chief. When it comes to Sami Zayn, it's better to have him in the castle pissing out than out of the castle pissing in. Heyman worshipped the tribal chief and treated him as a godlike figure. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief! <laughs> we all acknowledge you, my tribal chief! The head of the table! The tribal chief! In God mode himself! Oh my god, this is it's literally... celebration, wise man. You are fair. Insane. This is hilarious. I love you, wise man. I love you too, my tribal chief. And I thank you for your honesty. Let's be honest, the way you look at Roman Reigns, a little weird. <laughs> Paul demonstrated his loyalty in many ways, not just from the way he spoke and offered wisdom to Reigns, but through the little things Heyman did, from the way he held a title, to his expert pass on the microphone, He's just so extra, bro! Or when he called Roman on the phone. I just love how animated he is. I want someone to look at me and talk to me like Paul Heyman does to Roman. Oh my gosh, bro. Paul Roman Reigns. To his brilliant facial expressions in the background of promos or during matches. I am gonna be the one to take <laughs> him down! A remorseless Roman Reigns. O'Shea? That is O'Shea. Oh, God. Tell Charlie to fire up. Oh! Wait just a minute! Oh, my gosh. This is hilarious. Not so fast! Despite not being the main focus of the scene, Heyman was always reacting. Edge there! Spare! Cover it! Cover him, Edge! Do it, Edge! There it goes! It was this level of acting that helped make the Bloodline story so iconic, which further cemented Heyman as one of the industry's greatest characters. How'd WrestleMania do without Roman Reigns last year? To, 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 to my knowledge, it was the lowest attended WrestleMania of all time. ECW is dead, and I wish the same. Oh my God, I remember that guy. Dead. Paul Heyman is a man that gets it. He just gets it. W character. Yeah, no, I he's amazing, bro. I wish oh my gosh. The same for Sammy Zayn. In my last conversation with your dad, he told me you were his favorite son. But Roman Reigns was the son he always wanted. My tribal chief, do you want your sons? Yeah! No one has ever beaten this Roman Reigns. Ah, uh, yo, yo. Excuse me. Oh, God! Acknowledge him. He's been called a liar, a hustler, a genius, and a wise man. Paul Heyman is and has been all those things. It's what makes his story so special. He excelled wearing plenty of different hats across his time in the business, and his success allowed him to reach the top of the industry. When it's all said and done, Paul Heyman will be remembered as one of wrestling's most important figures. Now, Facts. if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video, where we discuss what made Roman Reigns the biggest star in wrestling. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, we gotta, uh, we gotta, cause WrestleMania is literally this weekend, right? Um, we gotta watch, we gotta watch the, uh, that video. We gotta watch the video, like, of the bloodline. I'm just interested, I'm just interested to see, like, what What's up, exactly the storyline I haven't story watched is. wrestling in years and I'm your age. Is that black guy the same dude the Undertaker buried alive in cement? <laughs> Hey chat, look what I can do because I'm old with a career. What? Okay. Um, 
Mold T Twitch TV Mold with the 10 gifted subs, my guy. I appreciate I appreciate you, man.